If this ends up working, there will be a day where nobody needs to wear hearing aids. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm talking about some of the challenges that we are facing using stem cells to cure hearing loss. Over the past several decades, scientific research into different methods of curing hearing loss have gained a lot of traction. And this is very good news considering that hearing loss is a massive worldwide problem. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 1.4 billion people have hearing loss and this number is expected to skyrocket to 2.5 billion people by 2050. Not only is untreated hearing loss really bad when it comes to overall health, quality of life, and the potential of dementia down the road, but it can also lead to significantly higher health care costs and costs to the economy. In fact, Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health identified that older adults with untreated hearing loss incur substantially higher total health care costs compared to those who do not have hearing loss, an average of 46%, totaling $22,434 per person over a decade. And in a 2007 article by the Better Hearing Institute, they indicated that in the United States, hearing loss was shown to negatively impact household income on average up to $12,000 per year, depending on the degree of hearing loss which means that the economic impact of untreated hearing loss would be in excess of $100 billion annually in the United States. And while treating hearing loss with hearing aids or cochlear implants would significantly reduce these costs, it would be much easier just to cure hearing loss altogether. Of course, in order to do so, researchers would have to discover a way to regrow hair cells inside of the cochlea, which is your hearing organ. You see, humans are born with approximately 3,500 inner hair cells and 12,000 outer hair cells. The inner hair cells ultimately control the clarity of the sound that is audible to you because they are responsible for taking the vibration of sound and turning it into a neural impulse that travels up your auditory nerve from your ear to your brain. Outer hair cells, on the other hand, ultimately control the audibility of sound because they are responsible for enhancing the vibration of sound to ensure that the inner hair cells are able to receive the vibration. Most cases of hearing loss are due to the deterioration of these inner and outer hair cells, typically due to genetics, age, noise exposure, chemical exposure, or even head trauma. This means that if we could regrow or replace these hair cells, we could theoretically restore hearing function, effectively curing hearing loss. And one of the ways that researchers are trying to replace these hair cells is through stem cell transplants. But before I explain exactly how this would work and some of the challenges that come along with this type of therapy, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it's greatly appreciated. And if you wanna see more videos just like this one, make sure that you hit that subscribe button with notification bell and please let me know down in the comment section if you're interested in these different regenerative therapies like stem cell transplants. Now stem cell therapy is just one of three different therapies that researchers are looking into to regrow these different hair cells. The other two are molecular therapy and genetic therapy both of which I have covered on this channel. When it comes to stem cell therapy there are several different types of stem cells that can actually be used to regrow hair cells. This includes, but is definitely not limited to, adult stem cells, embryonic stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and neural stem cells. However, the goal of each of these is relatively the same. You basically need to have a stem cell, program it to become a hair cell, be able to transplant that hair cell into the cochlea, and have it function as an actual hair cell. If done successfully, researchers could essentially restore the normal function inside of the cochlea and eliminate the need for any types of technology like hearing aids or cochlear implants. Now you may be asking yourself, how is this stem cell therapy via transplantation coming along? Well, unfortunately, there are no FDA approved stem cell therapies at this point in time to restore hair cell function. There is a lot of research around the use of stem cells for other health conditions. And yes, some of them are looking into using stem cells to treat hearing loss, but as of right now, all the clinical trials that are going on are pretty much looking 
looking at safety and they're not yet onto efficacy. That's because transplanting stem cells inside of the cochlea is extremely difficult to do for a variety of different reasons. First, introducing stem cells into a cochlea potentially damages the cochlea further, which can create more hearing loss. The cochlea is essentially surrounded by bone, and accessing the inside of the cochlea would either require entering the round window membrane or drilling into the bone of the cochlea. In both cases, this could lead to a leakage of paralymph or endolymph fluids from inside of the cochlea and could cause even more hearing loss than you started with. Not to mention, you could be met with significant side effects including vertigo and even tinnitus. However, let's say that you could introduce these stem cells into the cochlea without causing additional damage, you would then run into the second issue, which is having these stem cells survive the endolymph fluid inside of the scale of media where these stem cells would have to go because of the high potassium content. This high potassium endolymph fluid creates a really harsh environment for a stem cell. And if the stem cell cannot survive, it's never gonna turn into a healthy hair cell that restores hearing function. Unfortunately, I have only seen studies where researchers have been unsuccessful at getting stem cells to survive inside of these high potassium environments inside of a lab. But let's go ahead and assume that they could do this. That would lead us to our third challenge, which is getting these stem cells to grow and innervate in the proper locations inside of the cochlea. Just because you transplant some stem cells into the cochlea, it does not mean that they will attach where they are supposed to, nor does it mean that they will actually establish a connection with the cochlear nerve especially if there's something called glial scarring that occurs when a hair cell dies and creates a scar preventing the physical innervation with the nerve again. Here are actual images comparing how healthy outer hair cells should be aligned on the left-hand side of the screen and an image of transplanted outer hair cells that are basically growing wherever they like to on the right. It's pretty easy to see that the transplanted outer hair cells are not in the proper location, which means they would probably not function the way that they are intended to. This would essentially create a situation where you would have something inside of your ears that looks like a hair cell, but it sure as heck don't function like a hair cell. But again, let's go ahead and assume that scientists are successful in transplanting these stem cells inside the cochlea, that they are able to survive the high potassium endolymph fluid, and that they are able to actually attach and innervate in the proper location. We would then be hit with a fourth challenge, which would be that we are not sure whether or not we can prevent these stem cells from continuously growing and replicating, causing tumors inside the ear. It is well documented that in certain cases, either embryonic or adult stem cells replicate uncontrollably, causing tumors. I'll just say that if you have a tumor growing inside of your cochlea, it would cause so much damage that even if you could get it pulled out of there at some point, you're not gonna have anything else to work with that would actually restore hearing. However, if researchers are able to solve all of these different challenges using stem cells, then there is a good chance that they could actually cure your hearing loss. And trust me, the financial incentive for them to do so would be massive. It would basically dwarf the entire size of the whole hearing aid market, which is only $7 billion annually. And really, it's just a matter of time for researchers to be able to identify the different methods that don't work and identify the different methods that do work. Either way, with each additional clinical trial, we get one step closer to curing hearing loss. However, if I had to bet, I would say that either molecular therapy or genetic therapy are much closer to curing hearing loss than stem cell therapy, but even both of those are probably pretty far off in the distance. Until then, you should really be taking the steps necessary to treat your hearing loss with whatever's available currently including hearing aids, cochlear implants, and even auditory brainstem implants. Each of these different treatment options has a long track record of treatment success for individuals with hearing loss. And I know some people choose not to treat their hearing loss because they think hearing aids are too expensive. But as I said earlier in the video, you are actually spending more money by not treating your hearing loss because of the additional healthcare costs and loss of income. Regardless, it is hard not to get excited about stem cell therapy or any other type of therapy that could potentially cure hearing loss, we just have to wait for science to catch up.